his play was 100% unacceptable. And the only thing that is acceptable is on Wednesday's practice, he is third straight, not backup. Mike White and Joe Flacco will battle to see who starts. Because the only way Robert Sal is going to get to where he wants to go as a head coach is to hold everyone accountable. Players are fined for being late, for being overweight, and his play isn't good enough by any metrics. And just because you were drafted second overall, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm just reading a, a message on a text chain from the radio show, from the morning show, KJM on ESPN Radio. And uh, it, people were talking about how Justin Fields apologized to his team oh. the other day, said, hey, the defense gave us a chance to win, and I didn't come through for you. I mean, That's it, I mean you could have had Justin Fields. <laughs> have you seen Justin Fields? Now we're going to go with Zach Wilson. Coach, you have experience making these type of decisions with quarterbacks. What's your reaction to what Mike Tannenbaum just had to say? Well, Mike was there when we made the change. Uh, now, it wasn't in this situation. We were actually losing. We weren't a winning football team. We were 2-5. and five. And um, the first thing I, I did is I brought both quarterbacks in and uh, brought Vinny in and told Vinny this. I said, look, Vinny, we're struggling. It's not just you as a quarterback. It's everybody. We're not coaching well. We're not playing well. I can change a lot of different positions. But when I change the quarterback position, it'll get everybody's attention. And it did. And uh, lucky for us, we won the division uh, with a 2-5 and five record. Now, I think this situation is a little bit different. I think it's different than the one that I was involved in, right? You have a young quarterback, second year. You're actually, he's actually 5-2. and two. Uh, He beat the Buffalo Bills. But after the New England game, not this one, the prior one, when he threw the three interceptions, um, this offense got spooked with him. And so, basically, you put him in a straight jacket and said, don't lose the game. Just don't lose this game. No different than New England, how New England was playing. And, and so, now he's playing cautious, right? And that's the wrong position to ask a guy to play cautious. It's the wrong position. And so, uh, some of this is on uh, the coaching as well. you got to realize you're asking this guy to do this. Uh, but then when it looks like this, and by the way, if they don't run the punt back, it's still 3-3 three to three and they're still playing, by the way. So I just think there's a lot, a lot goes into this. I think the press conference is kind of what set everybody off. Along with his play, I get it. I would, I, I would have a conversation with the team to make sure of this, that he hasn't lost the team. Mm. That's the first thing, that he hasn't lost his teammates. Right, and you were head coach of the Jets, and Mike T was – GM of the Jets when you won the division. I, I, I got to say one thing about this, guys. That press conference, before anything happens, before I put him back in, if I were the coach, he would have to face the media and say, look, I was asked a question, just lost to this team twice in three weeks. I was frustrated, right? Um, and the defense absolutely gave us a chance to win. Of course they did, obviously. They didn't, and, and I reacted out of frustration. I don't, I don't agree, I think Max. he has to clean that up. Agree. No, he got he got to face his teammates. Forget the media. Well, that's right. that's who he has to face. That's his teammates. Who? He no got to go in that locker room. I'm having I'm I'm having a players only meeting, and we're gonna address the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room at this moment right now is Zach Wilson, because for him to sit up there and say he did not let the defense down, when in two games versus the New England Patriots, they the the Patriots scored one touchdown, and that came on a fourth and one to Jacoby Myers from Mac Jones. For him to sit up there and say that and then dismiss it and then walk off, that I, have, I have an issue with that. And luckily, I'm glad I'm not playing right now because I would have had to address him right then and there. I don't care if you're the starting quarterback. I don't care if you're a starting wide receiver. Those guys in, the, in that locker room are putting their blood, sweat, and tears in. They're going out there fighting week in and week out. And for you just to dismiss things like that and say you didn't let those guys down, who you went through training camp with, who you went through the offseason with, I think it's just – it's called – uh, just he's privileged he feels entitled and entitled. Th that's what you get when you have guys like that and and but I'm not of course you got to address your teammates but he made those comments publicly that's like you know I think he's got to own it in addition to that publicly he has got to own that to me to, if he wants to represent the franchise if I if I ran the zoo Graz, what's the latest you're hearing on the Jets' plan for yeah, Zach Wilson? Yeah, I, I think they're wrestling. I like that. Robert Sala came out for his press conference last night two hours late. Like, there were some meetings yesterday about this topic and what they're going to do about it. And I think as of last night, they hadn't really decided. Now, I think it, it's, hard to, it, it's hard to tell for sure. My sense of it is 
that they probably give him another start. Now, I think they want to see how he reacts to everything that's been going on, the criticism he's taken, et cetera, what he does in the locker room, what he does in practice with and around his coaches. I, I think they want to see how he handles all that, and if they're not happy with it, and or he starts Sunday and plays badly, I don't think they'd hesitate to make a change. But they, it's a big decision, uh, and, and they're, they're weighing it for sure. It is getting late <laughs> early for Zach Wilson. Go ahead, Coach, last yeah, comment. It's funny. You know what? They're in the hunt to go to the playoffs, guys. That's what I'm saying. It'd they're, be better they're, they're, if they were 2-8. and eight. Yeah, It'd be easy. They're in the hunt to go to the playoffs. That's right. Okay, and so they have let's a, understand that. And he was 5. He's 5-2. and two. They have yeah. a young, talented defense. Those things age out every four or five years. You can't mess around two, three seasons waiting to find out with this defense. Time now for Fantasy Facts with Eric Moody. Uh, no buys in Week 12, but Fantasy Manager is still looking for help on the waiver wire, as always. They're making that playoff push. Eric, what running backs are you looking at this week? Got three names for you, Max. The first one is Isaiah Pacheco, who had a oh, season yeah. high 107 rushing yards against the Chargers on Sunday. And you've got Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who's going to miss time, you know, with a high ankle sprain. And so it really positions Pacheco to get a ton of work in that backfield. And the Chiefs are an explosive offense, ranked first in total yards per game and first in points scored per game. Now, the second player I would look at is Rashad White with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think fantasy managers may have forgotten that the Buccaneers had a bye week last week because I'm surprised White's available in a high number of leagues that he's, that he's in. And you look at White, I still expect him to lead the Buccaneers' backfield over Leonard Fournette in Week 12. He faces a Browns defense that allows the second most fantasy points per game to running backs. So once you fire up White as a flex option with upside, last but not least, let's talk about Latavius Murray. He now finds himself in a Denver backfield that does not have Melvin Gordon, who was waived just due to his fumbling woes. You got Chase Edmonds, who they traded for, who's going to miss time with a high ankle sprain. And you've got Murray, who's actually surpassed 10 touches or more in every single game he's played for Denver this year, and he had a season-high 17 fantasy points against the Raiders on Sunday. He's a volume-based RB2, in my opinion, Max. Even for Daily Fantasy, I just looked up Pacheco, 5,500. Ooh, got to jump all over that, right? <laughs> He's getting the carry. <laughs> oh, absolutely. There's a couple of wideouts you think of uh, uh, that are worthy of picking up. Who are they? Got two names for you, Max. The first one is Christian Watson. I'm, I'm surprised he's still available in the number of ESPN, uh, ES, uh, ESPN leagues excuse me, out there right now. So if he's available, pick him up. He scored 54 fantasy points over the last two weeks. Only other wide receiver with more is Devontae Adams. So he's a flex option with upside each and every week. He will be a focal point of the Packers passing game moving forward. So the, the next name is Donovan Peoples-Jones with the Cleveland Browns, mm. who's had five or more games with 11 or more fantasy points. And so he's someone that had a season high 17 fantasy points uh, against the Bills last week. And I like him as a flex option with upside. And I look at his fantasy ceiling. It could be even higher in the immediate future with Deshaun Watson coming back. So those are the two players that I would pick up. Yeah, not to mention, you get to say Donovan Peoples-Jones, and that's always fun. Thank you, Eric. It's almost <laughs> time for my weekly top five.